Okay, so people have asked me about this antique cash register that I have here at my garage. So uh, I'm going to explain this to everybody. Here we are looking at a 1959 NCR Class 6000. And as you can see on the plate, it's actually a model 6155. It was built in late 1950. 59 and to my knowledge it has not been out of service a day since originally owned by the Bonton used to mailman's sold in the 80s to a fruit farm where I got it so as you'll see we have Clark keys here it's a B D, E, H, and K. Don't ask. I have no idea. You can change the clerks, and there are actually locks to lock them either out or in. I don't have the keys for these. Over here, you have the departments. Okay? Now, when they show up on the screen, they just show up as a, as a Roman number. So, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 8 shows up as tax, and then 9. Okay, oh, it's simple operation. The blue keys, or green keys, depending on how you look at it, are coin. You know, white keys are paper. Gray keys are thousands. The chances of you actually using a gray button is zilch. Um, and I'm not even sure why they were even built with this many keys, but you know I guess they were looking forward so I'm going to try to get as good a picture of the operation of this thing as I can here so just bear with me okay so for operation simple control lever stays in the middle for normal addition this machine does not subtract does not do refunds does not do payouts it's simply an adder nothing else Simply select your clerk. I, we always use A. Enter your dollar amount. You can do it however you want. I always do it dollars and cents. So 5575 is 5575. You select your department that you're going to put it under. I'm going to put it under miscellaneous. And then you press the big button, which is called the motor bar. Operates the electric motor inside the machine. Very well. See, clerk A to dollar amount, 55.75, department 5. Very simple. Shows the same thing on the opposite side. This machine weighs about 400 pounds. I am not going to show you. Now you'll notice the clerk button stays down for now. You can either total it out or you can add more items. So 25.90, simple. There are no zeros. You do not press anything for a zero. Okay, go put it under the machine. You'll see 2590. Simple. Alright. Like I said, this machine does do thousands. So we can do 3995 98. Okay, 97. Screw it. Same thing. Select your department, miscellaneous, and operate your machine. 3995-97, department 5. Simple. Now at this point, let's say this is the end of the transaction. So what you're going to do is you're going to move the bar from add to subtotal, okay? You'll notice it will not move any further. Select subtotal. Do not touch anything on the register. Press the motor bar. This is your total as of now, okay? Now, the drawer is not, you cannot see it, but the drawer is not open, okay? The drawer is still shut at this point. This is basically your running total, okay? At this point in time, the clerk would look at a tax chart. Pennsylvania 6% on every dollar. And for this amount of money, I'm horrible at adding taxes. So I'm not even going to attempt to. But at this point in time, the cashier, back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, would add sales tax. So let's just go on a whim and just say 135 to 135.90. Okay? So choose 135.90. No cents. We're going to select tax. Mine says tax parts because we're a garage. 
Okay. Right the motor bar, you'll see it says tax. Very well. At this point, this would be the end of the transaction. You select item total, which is basically a grand total. Press the motor bar. This is the grand total, 100%. Drawers open. At this point in time, you make change, put it on account, whatever you do. You would have a receipt. There's a journal printer. I do not keep paper in this machine because we do not use it. So it's not necessary. Uh, the printer does work. Just the ribbon shot. But, I mean, the printer itself does work. It does have date and everything else. It's really cool. Uh, we just don't use it for obvious reasons. We don't really need it. Shut your drawer. Now you'll notice that the clerk button came up. So now at this point in time, another clerk could come over. Okay. Let's say you have multiple people running the same register. You could have six different people using this particular cash register. A logistical nightmare in terms of paperwork, but it's a doable thing. So, now, everybody says, well, what happens when you screw something up? Well, if you already add it, you're pretty much boned. So, like I said, this machine does not subtract. They do make the 6,000 where they do subtract. They even make them, believe it or not, where they make change for you. I don't have that. This is the most basic model and CR saw. So it is a little more advanced than some because it's got up to 9,999.99. But other than that, that's all it has. Now, if you enter the wrong amount, okay, that's easy. This here is your reset lever. You pull this. Any button that's down on this side of the keyboard is cleared, okay? Including these, if, let's say you screw up and press the motor bar by accident, it locks down. It's pretty rare, but it, it can happen on these machines. All you do is pull your reset bar. It's pretty simple. Now, at the end of the day, you have a key, okay? This is the master key. This is the only key I have, okay? This will do just about everything on this machine. Okay, so you have two options. You can either do an X or a Z. An X is basically you read what's going on. Uh, if you want to do an X, there's two options. There's a read department and a read clerk. So what you do is you insert your master key. Okay, this would be like the manager's key and turn it. And this will allow the bar normally to go up. No. <laughs> um, oh, I know why. Okay, now let's try this one more time. Whenever there's a clerk key pressed down, it will not go up, so you basically have to no-sale the register. Okay, so you have read department. At this point in time, you can put the, the bar in read department. Now, when they're up in these slots, they, the, the motor, the control bar will not move. I don't know, there's probably a specific term for this thing, I don't know what it is. And then you can just select a part, a department, we're going to select miscellaneous because that's what we've been adding under, and just hit the motor bar, drawer will pop open, it'll say, right now that department rang up $4,077.62. Great. Doesn't do anything, you can keep adding to it. Basically a running total, lets people, managers, see exactly how well things are going. Same thing with the clerk. You can select a clerk, you can read a clerk, okay? You'll see right now that clerk A has total $4,573.76 in there in, by themselves. That doesn't mean that's what's in the register, that's just saying that that's what this clerk rang up. You can do the same thing with another clerk. This clerk rang nothing up, which this clerk shouldn't have rang anything up, okay? Simple, they don't reset, just reads. So, you can turn the key back and remove it and go back to normal operation. Now, if you want to Z the register, which is a total zero of the register, put the key in the bottom lock and turn it. There we go. It's a little sticky. It's 60 years old. It has a right to be. Now, you have two options. You can reset clerk, okay, which you select a clerk. This clerk rang up $4,573.76. Normally it would print you a chit, 
you would have a piece of paper you would write everything on, which we don't do. Okay, same thing with all your other departments. Okay? Simple. Now, none of the other clerks have anything rang up under. So, now, we're going to go down one more notch. Okay, as you see, the drawer is open. Well, you can't see, I'm sorry. The drawer is open. All right, we can shut the drawer. Every time you op do one of these operations, the drawer opens. So, um, now we're going to go down to reset department. Now, we only have one department that we rang anything up under, and that's the miscellaneous. So, that's the only department we're going to reset. But just to show you how a normal closeout would go, we're going to reset all the departments. Okay, there is no master reset. You have to do them all individually. It will print normally. It would print each hit out every time you do a department. Every time you clear a department, it will open a drawer as well. Now you can operate this register with the drawer open. There is a setting to not allow you to do that. It is not set that way. Okay. So simple. You select your department. You don't have to worry about clerks. Just select department. Okay. And one by one. You'll see zero dollars, zero dollars, okay, and it's going to go like this for every department. Ooh, there's 99 cents on that one, holy crap. So, see, there you go. There's your big one, okay. Now this one here will have something, this is the tax. And as you'll see, this is the only one that actually says tax. Now, you could buy these from NCR with these flags actually telling you different departments. Meat, grocery, drinks, bar, you know, whatever, depending on what the register was used for. This is a generic version, okay? This was like the cheapest possible 6000 you could buy. And these were very expensive registers in the 50s and 60s. Um, I would have to say this particular machine probably cost five or $600. Which is a, was a good, very good chunk of change back then. It's still a good chunk of change today. So, I could be wrong. But, that's the, the tax one is the only one that actually has a department flag. So, which is fine because this way, if I ever want to resell it or if I want to repurpose it for something else, it's very easy to do. I don't have to try to reset anything. People are calling even though we're closed. I love it. So, continue clearing everything out. And there you go. The drawer is there. The drawer is Z'd. You write down all your totals, or you get it off your printer. Okay, and it tells you exactly how much money should be in your drawer. We don't keep money in the drawer. We don't really even use the drawer very often. Um, we have another cash box we use. Um, I just use the register to actually total things up, so that, uh, we can keep a running tab. It's actually easier than using a computer since everything else we do is by hand. So we don't use computer invoicing or anything like that. Everything's done by hand. So the old NAND, the old MCR is actually easier for us to use. So, and then at the end of your day, put the key, put the lever back to add, take your key out, and you're done. Any questions? Send me a message. I'll answer them. This machine, to my knowledge, has never been rebuilt. It has, it's been serviced. It's been serviced fairly regularly over the last 35 years. Um, I just serviced it myself not too long ago. And it just simply entails taking the cover off, lubing everything up, making sure everything's working fine. Um, I did just redo the printer again. Uh, the printer did jam again. Um, it's actually rather known for that. These are very, very heavy duty printers. Um, they do jam quite often, uh, especially as they age. The machines themselves almost never fail. These are the heaviest duty, not to mention the heaviest freaking things, um, the heaviest duty register you could buy from NCR. Uh, these things are tanks. I mean, they're solid steel for crying out loud. Uh, the drawer, the whole bottom of the register where the drawer is, is actually solid oak. Um, the drawer itself, with the exception of the insert, is actually all wood. Um, trust me. Somebody broke into your business, they ain't walking out with your damn register. <laughs> They're gonna pick this thing up and say, screw it. So, they were good for that. So, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll answer them when I can.